please stand. We welcome our General Superintendent of the United So the Lord always comes with purpose. He never comes by accident. So let's see what God wants to do here today. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. This statement is just before Israel entered the promised land. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. I want to preach for a while today the faithful God. The faithful God. You may be seen. Now, before I get into my message today, I do want to say that I appreciate this congregation and your pastor. The United Pentecostal Church International now has churches in 212 nations and territories of the world. That's significant. Almost every nation of the world, most of the nations where we do not have a presence are small, about 100,000 people or less, or strongly Muslim countries. While we have many works in Muslim countries, it's very difficult to get into those countries and make contacts and be able to conduct services. So we have been able to reach many places in the world. We have over 40,000 congregations worldwide, 4,600 in the United States and Canada. And I mention that because it's due to churches like yours. Our mission, our official motto as the United Pentecostal Church International is the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. And it's because Pastors like Brother Oliver and churches like you that bind together all across our nation, that's the way that we can reach our world. And we appreciate their, the fact there are other groups of independent churches, but they cannot have the impact that we have working together. It's very valuable and very needed. And I just wanted to commend you because when you come here, every prayer that you pray, every dollar that you give, every soul that you touch, so every person you win and disciple, you can see the results here. We've got a full house here. But what you can't see are the millions, literally millions, of fellow believers baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, pursuing holiness as a result of what you're doing right here, along with thousands of other churches doing the same thing. So I commend you. Now, in our text, as I mentioned a moment ago, Israel was getting ready to go into the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised to give them. And before they were to enter this land, God wanted to make sure they understood who he was and who they were worshiping. Because when they would enter this land, they would meet people who worship many different gods. They worship Baal. They worship goddesses such as Ashtaroth. Uh, neighboring uh, peoples worship other gods such as Molech, Dagon, and so forth. And so God wanted his people not to be enticed with the worship of other gods. Amen. The thinking of that day was that each land had its own god. In fact, each valley and each hill had its own god. If you were going to enter into a land and grow crops and be successful, you had to worship the gods and goddesses of fertility. You had to worship the gods of that particular land. And so God knew his people would face this kind of temptation. 
And that's why he gave the message in Deuteronomy 6, 4, the preceding chapter, a verse that we believe and know well. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We still believe that's true today. It's only one God. And so in that context, we find here in chapter 7, one of the ways that you can know the true God, in contrast to all the false gods, the true God is the faithful God. And that's what I'm preaching about today. Even though there could be many gods as far as the world is concerned, the other gods are not faithful. There's only one who's faithful right. under all circumstances. The one true God. And that's one way we know who He is. Now, what does it mean to be faithful? To be faithful means to be trustworthy, to be loyal, steadfast, true, consistent. A faithful person is someone you can <laughs> safely put your faith in. A faithful person is someone who keeps His word. God is that kind of a God. Yes, yes, yes. Now the opposite of faithful is unfaithful. The book of Proverbs talks about an unfaithful person. It says that person is like a broken tooth or a broken ankle or a foot out of joint. What's the significance? Well, when you're sitting there in the chair with your ankle, broken ankle or foot out of joint, it may not really be a problem. Because you don't need it. But when you stand up and put your weight on it, if you didn't have a problem before, now you have a problem. The same way, if you have a broken tooth, it may not really be a problem until you bite down on the apple. Then you have a problem. So the characteristic of being unfaithful is when you don't need it, it's okay. But just when you need it the most, it lets you down. It's easy to have friends come to a party. It's easy to have friends when you're paying for the food. But those are not necessarily faithful friends. The faithful friend is the person who stands by your side when you're in trouble. When you need help. When you need some help. When people are attacking you. The faithful friend is there just when you need him or her the most. And that's like our God. Now, in this world today, there are likewise many gods. You might say, well, Brother Bernard, we don't worship Baal here in Indianapolis. Well, don't fool yourself. The people of Indianapolis have their gods. Because whatever prevents people from serving the true God, that, in essence, has become their God. Whatever reason why they don't come to church, whatever reason why they don't repent of their sins, Whatever reason why they're not baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Spirit. Whatever reason that they're not living a holy life according to the teachings of the Bible. Whatever that is that prevents them, that has become their God. So for many people, it's the pursuit of pleasure. For others, it's the pursuit of money and material possessions. For others, it's their status in society. For some, it may be their own religious tradition that prevents them from obeying the Word of God. For some, it's their philosophy of life. They think they're doing well in their life. They've got money in the bank. They see no need to go to church. These are the gods of today. My message is, all these other gods are unfaithful. It may look like these gods are blessing people. But... When, when, you, when the economy's strong, when you have a good job, when your health is good, you've got money in the bank, your family's doing well, it's easy to think, my philosophy of life, my love of pleasure, of my money in the bank, my tradition, that must be working pretty well. I have a good life. I'm successful. I'm happy. But remember, the test of a God is not when everything's going well. The test of a God is not when everything's going your way and you don't have help. But what happens when you lose your job? 
What happens when you're in a terrible automobile accident? What happens when the doctor gives a very negative diagnosis to you or a member of your family? What happens when your kid's on drugs? What happens when your marriage seems to be falling apart? What happens when the trials of life bombard you? Most of all, what happens when you face the moment of death itself? What you'll find is all those other gods can't help you then. All the money in the bank can't help you then. All the consumer pleasure can't help you then. I'm here to preach. There's only one God. extrovert or something but as pastor I would know wait a minute 10 years ago yes. that guy was in a coma Come on. and he had a heart attack right. they jumped him back to line but he was in a coma and the doctors told me and told the family he's just gonna he's gonna be a vegetable if, if he even survives there's only a 10% chance he will survive this night if he does survive he'll probably be a vegetable we don't know what kind of brain damage has been done the best thing would be if he just has a heart attack just let him go and so when you sign this form saying do not resuscitate and so the family signed the form but we prayed and God raised him up and he's in the church today if he wants to run he can run if he wants to shout he can shout because he's worshiping God faithful God praise God I see a woman dancing around in the front and you say, well, why would she get so excited? Well, because she was on cocaine. Come on. And she came to church several times. But each time would slide back. But finally, one day, oh something got a hold of her. Oh, yeah. And she made a commitment to God. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she's one of our modern Sunday school teachers. She has a right to dance. And this God is faithful. And then here's another person that was raised in church and they never got on drugs. They never touched alcohol. They never smoked cigarettes. But God gave them a good family and a good marriage. They have a right to praise God too. Yeah. They can deliver from 